Well, hello everybody, Vicky here. Um, this is number two, episode number two in our series of using things up and concentrating on die cuts, as you can see. At the moment, I haven't got too much footage of me die cutting because we all know how to do that. I did get the Gemini out and I was giving it a go. I must admit, I'm not the biggest fan of it once the plates start to buckle it's a little I, I just find it all a little bit difficult it, it cuts well as you can see i don't think there's actually anything wrong with the product itself i just find it a little bit slow and a little bit clunky so what i've done is is i've gone uh, back to my little big shop this is a big shop that uh, what they call it a traveler maybe the two sides close up and the handle flips and goes in. So it's a very compact, concise little machine. Um, I have since got a big shot, a pink big shot that, that doesn't close up. So <laughs> I've got three of them now. And it, basically it comes down to what's the best for my hands. This, this fellow here, he's done a big, big job for me over the years. And I'm finding it a little bit more difficult to handle that. But the new pink one that I got... I got it off Marketplace at a very good price. Very appreciate, appreciative of that. So I'm just cutting out a variety of different dies. Um, and then we will go ahead and we will start making some stuff. So I hope everybody's well. You grab, grab your die shot out, a big shot, sorry, or whatever cutter you have, and... and Grab a couple of dies and cut them and, and um, play along with me because it's always much more fun when we're doing things together, I think, anyway. Now, this is going to be a, a series made up of voiceovers and of me speaking, so I hope it doesn't become too confusing, but that's just the way it is in this house. We do what we can. A minute. So, first, first up... I will see how this will go in the brown or whether or not I'll change it to a black. So I just want it mainly on the white. But it would not be the end of the world if it went on to the, on the paper. So that's one done. So you can see I'm not looking for a perfect dark print so that went over there on, on the paper a little bit that's fine it'll just add interest so we'll go in there and I'll put my hand in the ink pan wonder why I get ink everywhere and we'll put you and you right so that's up there So this time I don't really mind. I'm actually aiming to get a little bit of it on to the paper itself. This looks like rain or Indian feathers. You know the Indian um, headdresses. Palette knife. <laughs> Palette knife. Oh dear. I blame the cold weather, hey? It was so oh, cold. We had to go out this morning, so we had we had to get up. <laughs> oh, it was cold. So cold. We're Queenslanders. We don't we don't do cold. Graham and I grew up down south, and we grew up in a in a rather nasty cold climates both of us from different parts but both of us with the cold but we're we're old <laughs> we're old and we've been in Queensland for so long now I think you'd have to say that we are Queenslanders now where did I have those little hexagons so what these hexagons are yes they have been die cut but they're actually the, the um, negative space of another die that I've got 
if you just give me a second I've got some dies in here that I want to be playing with and just while I'm looking at it I have got some dies cut and listed in our shop if you'd like to go over and have a look at some of them you don't particularly want to get your die cutter at your big shot out or you just want something ready or if you don't have the ones I've got you can pop over there and have a look at them so they're, they're the hexagon you can see that that's the die great for, great for a B scene and then these are just the negative spaces that come out of them and I thought they just look so perfect and so useful I couldn't throw them away so I'm, I'm, I'm doing more with the negative spaces at the moment than I am the actual die itself but that's okay okay we're back to a voiceover this is the second time it's a windy day here and Cody gets a bit so there's a bit of barking going on but we'll try again so what I'm doing now is, is with those little negative spaces the hexagon hexagons I thought that I might use it to decorate the bag and I don't know if I mentioned it or not but it's actually gesso I put gesso on both those bags and I've also folded it in such a way that it will fit in and get stitched in to my journal when it happens so I've got I've inked around all the hexagons so I'm just going through this handy dandy little book of stickers um, and I'm going to be putting the stickers down onto the, the it's card stock and it's called uh, sand and I haven't been able to get any more of it and, and every time I ask in office works where I'm sure I got it from they look at me like I have two heads but anyway, that's okay. So just fiddling around with the hexagons, just, just getting them sorted, just deciding on what we're going to do, and we'll go from there. I don't know about everybody else, but I find I get myself into a... like I get some things around me and I start creating, and then I just don't think of all the different things that I've got, and... It's sort of like, oh, it's too much bother just to get things out and use them. I'll just get this made quickly and next time I'll use a die cut or something like that. We do tend to be a little bit like that. So we accrue all these wonderful dies and, and, and stamps and lost my stamp pad. And so we have it all surrounding us, but it's it's not where we're, we're looking if you can see my stamp pad, yell now, please. I think every now and again it's a good idea just to, to get a few things around you so that you don't get overwhelmed. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'll be back. Well, I found a stamp pad. I'm not 100% sure. I've got a couple that are the, the same, the same um, gathered twigs. I've got a couple of gathered twigs. So I don't know whether or not this is the one I was using. Or whether or not it's the other one. Okay, so that's stamping quite nicely. So how do I want this?
this is um, field notes and it's for all of us I think it's one of the, the most used stamp pads going uh, stamp sets going So I'm actually using quite a quite a few different <coughs> pardon me um, bits and pieces of my supply that I have. So this is it should make us warm and fuzzy when we use stuff that we've you know like we've spent a lot of money on, which I'm not grumbling about at all. I love everything I've got, but like I said, we kind of get into these little rhythms or or um, ruts, I don't know if you'd call them ruts because I don't feel like I'm in a rut when I create but we tend to go for the same things all the time because they're close by us so what I've done and I think I've spoken about this in the past I have, um, if you have a look on my room tour you'll see that over to my, my left here I've got a little cupboard that we took the the doors off and I put stencils I've oh, got stencils, embossing folders, stamps there and inks and some little bits and bobs right, right at my fingertips so every now and again I rotate, ra rotate those out with with other things like I get a few different die, um, stencils out and a few different dies out so forth and so on and kind of like do it that way now what I want to do here just wait a minute and this is why we all get into such a mess <coughs> pardon me we want a stencil to do a little bit there and we want a stamp to do something <laughs> then we want our die cuts and then we've got our ink and oh my goodness it just goes on doesn't it and and before we know it well I'll keep it in, in self-reflection here before I know it I have got stuff everywhere So I just want to kind of just make some marks, do a couple of different things just to try and give it some dimension. And I've got a little pouch here with some background stamps. And because I've got them in the in the back in the background, because I want them in the background, I ink up my stamp and then I stamp it off onto my paper, as you saw before, um, just so that I don't have it like really in your face. I just want it kind of there, but not obvious. Um, I believe the terminal correct terminology is second generation stamps stamping. I just call it <laughs> knocking a bit of paint off the paint, knocking a little ink off the ink pad before I put it down. Just just to keep it, I want it to look like a little bit of a hessian bag type thing. I don't know why. So that's for that one. Great little. These are. Um, it's a dark room door, but I better be careful. It might not be. I 
could be stamp is anonymous either either or I think so these are, are flourishes and once again just being mindful and I don't have a problem with stamping over like the stenciling that I did just then just trying to give it that illusion of of depth in there just to try and make it a little bit more interesting without overdoing it so now we've got that now this is a, a floral themed one so what I think I will do now is I will get the best way to do this now hang on a minute I'll be back okay so what I've got here is this yet something else that I haven't used so you can see that I've got things in front of me I'm really really trying to make a conscious effort these are Jane Devonport and they are watercolors I was trying to see if it said anything else the Colour Institute Byron Bay that's just down the road from us that's where she comes from so if I I don't want it too bright I'm always worried about pressing that but it'll force it out here if I use too much pressure so it says push there so If I tried to do that on the page, I'd end up with a big blob. I just want to put a little bit of colour through the white gesso, but I just want just a, a little bit, and that's more blue. I actually thought that was green, but no. All right. This is a nice colour. It, it does look blue now I look at it. It's, it's not her colours, it's me. <laughs> I plus, aren't I? It, it's, it, it's, I'm struggling. I really am struggling. So I just want... I just want to put a bit of colour up there. Nice and wet. So that it will run down. Actually, it is green. Oh, I don't know looking green now just want to try and I don't know if you can see what I'm doing just A while since I've played with doing mixed media and I'm really really very rusty now because I've watered that down so much and you can see I use far far too much color because they are intense they are beautiful amazing colors you can see I've got some green happening here because I'm washing it out so if I just put another bit there sometimes the hardest thing is is to know when to stop and I think I'm almost there from what I wanted so see that's moving down you can see the blue it's moving beautifully there now I really like that so I won't wet that down anymore giant puddles up the puddles it's just do some creating where you're not in a hurry just come and sit down and, and just do what I'm doing I'm sure there's artists out there that would be ripping their hair out watching me now but 
I am a creative, I give myself permission to be that and I don't need other people to like my work. It's wonderful to have people say that they like your work and what you've done but you have to remember that there needs to be some things in our life that we do just for ourselves. Not everything needs to be graded. Not everything needs to be critiqued. And what we can do is, is just play around any way we want to. Because this is us. This is us being us. And not so much for me anymore. I don't go to work anymore. Um, I would if I could to tell you the truth well I probably would have retired by now but I stopped working far too young and I missed work because when you're at work and it's surprising just how many how much of your social life revolves in and around your work because normally we don't have time for social life outside work. We're that busy trying to keep up. Now that, that is very, very subtle. It's just, just the hint of colour in there and it's just the way I wanted it. It's got some nice little runs down there and I'm, I'm really liking it a lot. So that's basically all I wanted to do. Now I've got all this here. I was going to do them all different colours, but there's a lot there to waste. So what I might do is... See, it's a beautiful colour. It's, it's just an amazing colour. And I've watered it down so much, it's only very pale. Oh, hello, Mr. Louie. Is there any need for you to be jumping all over me? Please don't. Louie's here jumping up at me he thinks because I'm talking there's someone there that needs he needs to say hello to just wait I'll be back in a, in a minute yet again okay because I haven't done this before I've ended up with a ridiculous amount of um, color on, on my mat so rather than just wiping it up I'm going to try and pick up some try and pick up most of it and this can be the base of something a project later on because that colour is just too beautiful so I did that on the watercolour I'll smooch it around so you can see how much more I put on there than I should have that's a really really lot of watercolour to go on one piece of paper that's what I was going to say so I've got that one then the trick is is because I'm, I've now dragged down so much stuff I'm running out of room to put it so this is just copy paper here and that's just what I do so I don't waste any mediums I probably get a bit too carried away with it sometimes but so you can see I've got quite a bit quite a bit up on it and it got a bit thin so it's going to the green so I'm just going to leave that there like that and I'll put them aside probably on the floor and hope Louie doesn't tread on it or want to eat it It's likely to do both and then we've only got just a little bit to clean up so that's not too bad just remember just constant just think about what you're doing when you're putting color out to use just how much of it realistically you're going to use so that you don't do what I just did and have all that stuff everywhere now I've got that that was a whole lot of time taken up but just whole just a little piece of colouring but it shows up a little bit more off camera
yeah and there's some down here too that you can't see so I quite like that so I'll just pop off and I'll dry this and then I'll be back for some reason I have lost some footage I was having a little bit of trouble with recording and I've obviously deleted the whole getting from where we were to where we are now but you can see what I've done I've used the die cuts and just put clusters up and got a few things happening on the bags um, sorry for the noise it's very windy today and then the low cloud and it blows the sound across our way which means we can hear the cars but there's not a real lot I can do about it best I can do is hope that the dogs don't start barking so what we've ended up with is, is we've ended up with two they're two paper bags they've been folded I think there's maybe a three inch uh, behind that and these are to go into a signature and to get stitched in so on the back page there will be a tuck spot of, of some description that we can decorate of that gilding glue i have spilt that twice now and it is not it is so sticky it's such a mess so just cleaning up my desk you know doing it the way we normally do everything to the side and we'll worry about it later so I'm just laying out what we've done now I've used I don't know maybe three different lots of dies in here and it, and this is using up our die using not using up but using our dies that we've got so I'm just talking about how pretty it looks I think I don't know <laughs> probably still saying what I just said there's three different lots of dies in there and I cut them before we started. So it's really handy to have particularly the dies, this one here. It's a Sizzix. It's a really handy dandy um, die to have. So I've used that, that in there as the label. I've also used a Stampers Anonymous stamp, uh, field notes I believe it was, and just a couple of little background stamps that I think I think might have been dark room door I'm not a hundred percent sure on it that one has had a good life it's well loved I'm not a hundred percent sure either and then I've just used the butterfly die and the nameplate dies to get the effect that we've got there um, I, it's been lots of fun putting this together trying to think of ways to use up a die I started off with the book plates and then it just went from there. I was able to get out to others and make use of them. So just remember, we've got it all around us. We forget we've got it all around us. We just have to go and have a little look before we start. Or one day when you don't feel like creating, but you want to be in, in amongst your craft and the art stuff, crank off a few of your die cuts and have them in a little bowl or a dish or whatever ready so that you can use them as you go because if we don't use them they just sit there gathering dust don't they and it's really dead money that we've spent so it's always best to use what we've got thank you for joining me i've had a, a good time putting this together for you like i said feeling very proud of myself <laughs> It kind of gives us a little buzz, doesn't it? But anyway, you all take care and be kind to yourself and please be kind to the person standing next to you. We don't know what other people are going through. Kindness works. Bye for now. See you next time.